you just made it to the top what's up everyone today I'm gonna to be showing you guys a tour of my overland 4x4 and also taking you guys down a local trail so this trail that I'm gonna be riding today doesn't really have a name but it is a fun local jump track that I thought it would be cool to get a GoPro video on and take you guys down there yeah, and send a few jumps, some rock gardens. And then later when we get back to the truck, I'll show you guys my 4x4 and give you guys a little walk around tour of what that looks like. But yeah, anyways, without further ado, let's drop in. Shift into the right gear here. Be careful not to hit any of the poison out. section. Another little double. Oh, some rocks. I am out here by myself, so I'll be skipping some of the bigger jumps. Alright, so as you guys could probably see, there are so many new features on this trail that I'm missing jumps, I'm clipping jumps. So I'm about to walk back up to the top and hit like half of the line over again because that's what it's about, progression. Let's go. Okay, so this was the feature where it all started to go wrong. I came over this with not enough speed and that caused me to just clip every single jump. Now I'm sure this feature is probably pretty old, but I haven't been up here in a little while and things change. So I'm going to try to re-hit this and also re-hit those two other jumps further down that way. Some of the jumps on this line are so big that I don't actually feel comfortable hitting them without somebody else like in a train with me just in case something were to go wrong. I think I decided to start just after this rock garden because the trail kind of goes uphill. I think this will be a perfect place to drop in. All right, you guys, now's the time. We're gonna try to clear every jump from here to the bottom. Let's go. Oh yeah, clear the first little tree gap. Come around this corner. Oh yeah. Oh, slash that turn. Now I gotta get on the gas. Oh, still clipped it. Can't clip that one. Can't clip this one. Oh, what? Crazy stuff. Straight down. We're gonna hit that berm. Oh yeah, here we go, road gap. Alright, back on the gas. Oh. 
So that ride was super fun, but what about the off-road vehicle? Well, I'll show you. Let's go ahead and start up here in the front. This custom bumper is outfitted with a Badlands synthetic 12,000 pound winch. Now that we talked about the front, let me show you what's underneath the truck that makes it so special. So underneath the front of the truck, I went for a crossover high steer from off-road design. And I also went with reed knuckles on this Dana 44. I do have a Dana 60 sitting in my garage that's just waiting to get built up. I want to put reed knuckles on that one as well. As far as a front drive shaft, it's a custom DOM front drive shaft that I built myself. Everything on this truck is, is home built, put together in the driveway. None of this work was done at a shop. In the rear I have a 14 bolt full floater. Along with an off-road designs six inch shackle flip. Along with a six inch spring lift as well. And Skyjacker shocks. The Skyjacker shocks do ride a little bit rough, but it was what I could afford at the time. And hey, it's a four by four, right? talk about some of the features of this truck that make it so special and capable and what I really wanted for a race rig that I could sleep out of and go four-wheeling with some of my buddies on the weekends. So to start, what everyone's interested in, probably why they clicked on the video, is these 37 inch Toyo MT tires. These tires are very smooth and quiet on the road and I just overall I think it makes the truck look so much better with stance. They're a 37, 13, 5 wide, and they're a load range E. Moving on towards the back of the truck. As you guys can see, I just got back from the ride. But it does have this custom tire carrier that I did build myself. It's bent out of inch and three quarter tubing. And along with this custom bumper, that's four by six square tube. Now what I liked about building the Suburban was that you really wouldn't need a rooftop tent. You kind of get one truck and it's good for anything you want to do with it. You have almost seven feet of space in the back. So in the back of mine, I chose to do two drawers. It's a two drawer setup and then I have a mattress on top. It's perfect for camping, perfect for weekend trips, anything you want to do with it. I'm going to open up the back here in just a minute and show you guys what it looks like back there. So all you do to go ahead and open up the back is you go ahead and twist this screw that I custom built with this little wrench I found in my garage. You lift this up and the swing out pops open. So as you can see right now, I have the tire on the swing out. I think it's pretty heavy, those big 37s. So yeah, why don't we go ahead, open up the barn doors, and we'll show you guys what we have back here. So in here is just a little compartment inside the old spare tire wheel well that I store water in. And then both of these drawers excuse my sketchy hinge system I need to rework that they pull out and you get roughly six feet of drawer with each one and these are eight or nine inches deep and I built them on these little slides as you can see one by square tube these little slides are built on one by square tube and they slide on skateboard bearings inside there that was a video i found on youtube i can try to link to it in the description so you guys can check that out yeah if we go ahead and we close the barn doors 
then I can go ahead and close up this tire carrier and I'll continue on talking about it. Go ahead and crank that down. Before anyone mentions, you probably saw it. Yes, I am missing one lug nut on the front driver's side. I'm gonna be replacing that soon. And yes, I know it's gone. I also have these upgraded front leaf shackles from off-road design they're basically thicker and i believe about a half or an inch longer than the original ones it gives you a little more lift and makes the ride much much better now what about engine transmission and transfer case well the engine in this big old beast is a chevy small block surprisingly it's strong enough for me cruises the highway at 70 miles an hour with no issues the transmission is the 700 R4. It's the transmission that came stock with this truck back when it was a 1500. We did have that rebuilt professionally because it went out once or twice. And as well as the transfer case, I rebuilt the transfer case myself. Um, let's see what else. It has a stock rear drive line. I'm gonna be upgrading that soon to get rid of the slip yoke. Oh right, I almost forgot. Both of these axles have Detroit lockers, so when I'm wheeling this truck's fully locked up, it's pretty hard to steer. I don't know if any of you have ever had Detroit lockers, but it's pretty nuts. As far as the interior goes, this thing is pretty clean. Yeah, as far as the interior goes, this is a pretty clean truck. I would like to get the headliner re-glued. I'm going to do that. As I said, everything that's been done to this truck has been done by myself or with the help of my dad in our driveway. Um, it took almost two years to get to this point, but overall, the last little leg of the build took about six months and we pretty much got it all done. There is still some things that we wish to do to it, though. Um, I want to get that Dana 60 fully built out so this thing becomes a one-ton rig and i also want to get rid of the rear drum brakes i'd like to get a disc brake conversion for the rear and um, i plan on filming some videos and showing you guys sort of the process of how i do work on this big beast in my driveway and some of the you know some of the flaws that it that it's got and every vehicle has its corks but it's all part of the uh the learning process and i'm still learning i'm pretty much brand new to this whole off-road truck thing so I've just been having lots of fun with it and uh, and yeah overall it's just been a big learning process and I truly I really do enjoy working on these trucks especially at home just lifting heavy parts and just getting stuff done getting out there getting it done feeling good about yourself at the end of the day that's what it's all about now I do have a list here on my phone of things just in case I missed something <laughs> I had to write it all down this truck's got 48 488 gears 37 inch Toyo MT tires it has a Dana 44 with reed knuckles in the front it has crossover high steer from off-road design that's DOM tube by the way if I didn't mention um, and in the rear it has an ORD shackle flip that's about that's a six inch shackle flip from off-road design it has a, for the motor, it's got a Chevy 350, small block. It's got 700R4 transmission. It has a 241C transfer case with a stock drive line. And both of the axles are equipped with Detroit lockers. The thing is a heavy beast and I want to build some rock sliders for it. <laughs> I think it would be really cool to take this truck out to all of the races like the Sea Otter Classic and big events with lots of people and just totally just camp out for the whole week and and yeah and just hang out and really have a good time and that's what I built this thing for. Yeah I would like to thank you guys for watching sticking around with me for another episode. This is the second episode I've ever filmed with me actually talking so I'm sorry if it was a little bit awkward but I'll get better. And uh, yeah, share this video with all of your friends and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave me, leave me a like down below and I'll see you guys later. Legends.